Hey biology folks, I uh, want to get you set up for our fruit fly lab and part of this is setting up our experiment. So hopefully you've already watched our videos on making observations and developing inferences and testing hypotheses. Now we're going to focus on the experiment itself. And the first part of understanding the experiment is understanding variables. So let's go on with that. So again, if you still have that circle of truth, uh, we've at this point we've talked about observations, we've talked about hypotheses, and now our focus is shifting to the experiment itself. How are we going to build an experiment to test the hypothesis that you've submitted um, regarding fruit fly population growth? So when we set up an experiment, let me use this example here, right? And so this isn't the example, the test that we're going to do, but this will get us somewhere. So my hypothesis is students who do more work, um, students do more work when learning in person than when at home in the hybrid model. This is obviously really important to us right now, and that's my hypothesis. Um, it's a testable guess. I'm not sure, but I plan on testing it. And again, there's a reason listed here. Uh, you can read it if you like, but for the most part, I think this is what's going on based on some things that I've seen. So I'm going to run an experiment to test. So when I run an experiment, I need to take into account the four different types of variables that we have in an experiment. Now I would recommend creating this table much like it is and following through with me and taking some of these notes, um, but let me go through these different variables one at a time. First of all, there are what we call confounding variables. Confounding variables are variables that can mess up my results in my experiment. If I'm trying to see if students do more work at home or at school, I want to make sure that they have the same teacher, that they're at the same school, that it's the same student, that it's the same assignment. I want to keep all of those things the same. So all I'm looking at is the difference between in-home versus in-person learning. And I'm not looking at a whole bunch of other things. Um, so what do I do with these variables? This is probably the most important variable to think about in an experiment. I do what we call controlling these. I keep them the same. I don't allow them to vary. I make sure I'm looking at the same students at home and in person with the same teacher, with the same assignments. I make all those things the same. And that way I can focus in on one thing. So some examples, and I've already cited a couple of them, but some examples that we talk about in this experiment are things like teacher, student, day of the week, assignment, what instructions I give, how much the work is worth, and so on. All of those are things I'm going to want to make sure are the same between in-person and at home. Um, if I let those things change, they could be affecting my results. So we call them confounding or controlled variables. They're ones that can confound our results if we don't control them, and if we control them, we have a good experiment. The second group of variables are what we call extraneous variables. And these are variables that have no effect at all on my results. But extraneous variables are things that you just allow as an experimenter to vary between your groups. I don't think hair length has a big impact on whether students do work in person or at home. I don't think the shoes that they're wearing matter much in, at, at home or in person. Those things are things I don't think matter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow them to vary. I don't care if they're different between my groups. I'll give you some examples of ones I came up with. You might have a different set, but I don't think period matters very much. I don't think I see a different behavior in my students in first versus second period. Now, I could be wrong on this, right? Period could be a factor. Maybe first period students do better early in the day in person and second period or vice versa. If I think this varies, what I can do is I can control it. I can call it a confounding variable and make sure it stays the same. I don't think gender matters, but maybe it does. If gender matters, then I want to make sure I'm testing just boys or just girls, so I don't let that vary. But again, um, confounding variables and extraneous variables are kind of interchangeable. If you think something's confounding, call it confounding. If you think something's um, that really truly can vary, then go ahead and allow it to vary. In a real experiment, you only want two real variables or two things that may impact your results to vary in your experiment. The first one is what we call the independent variable. And the independent variable is the one thing that we make different on purpose. It's the one thing that we want different between our two groups. Since we're trying to figure out if students are going to do better at home or in person, we'll allow this to vary. We'll allow the learning location to vary between our students. In one half of our experiment, we'll look at students at home, and the other half will look at them in school and see where, or where they're doing more work. So that's the independent variable. You want this one to be different. 
And finally, we have the dependent or responding variable. The dependent variable is the variable in your experiment that you measure to see if there's actually a difference. So in our case, we want to see if there's a difference between students' amount of work they get done at home versus the amount of work they get done at school. And so what do we do? Well, we're going to measure and record this. Now, this is a little iffy in our experiment. It's a little hard to measure how much work is getting done. And we can come up with a couple of different ways to look at it. The one I came up with is pretty simple. I'm just going to log, see how many minutes they were on Teams when they're at school versus at home. This is just one measure. It might not be perfect. I can write that up in my conclusion as a potential flaw, but that gives me an idea of what I'm looking at. Okay, so these are the types of variables in an experiment. Again, you only want one independent variable, one dependent variable, and everything else you either consider confounding and make it the same, or you don't think it matters and you ignore it and call it extraneous. The worksheet that you're going to be working on um, going forward is this one right here. The worksheet that you're going to work on is this variables in an experiment worksheet. Um, it's a pretty simple worksheet where you write out some definitions and then do this fill in the blank section. And then finally, identify variables and put them in the right spots. So for example, this first one asks you about fresh water um, versus soda. You have to figure out what the dependent is, what the dependent is, um, independent is, and then any potentially confounding variables. The very last one of these asks you to identify variables in your fruit fly lab for our, for our class. Maybe you're manipulating light if you're in one period. Maybe you're manipulating food. That would be one of your variables. What are you measuring? That's going to be pretty consistent across the group, uh, although some might measure carrying capacity and others might measure rate. And then think about all of the things that could be potentially confounding that we want to keep the same. So your job in the very last one is to list it out as best you can. That's it. That's your work. So go ahead and get to it, and we will move on with our experiment as a group from there.